Right, now we move on to questions to the Cabinet members. They will be taken for the completion of the 45 minutes. So can I ask Councillor Thomas for question 12? Question 12, 12 to the Cabinet member. <coughs> um, Mr Mayor, I'd like to thank Councillor Thomas for his question. Uh, this is a good news story. The facts in answer to the specific parts are, are listed in the answer as on the uh, printed paper but I would like to add a few comments uh, as well. I think it's important to realize that um, there are in fact only 20 occupational therapists employed by Wandsworth Council. The majority of the other OTs working in the borough are in fact employed by the National Health Service so I think that's a significant difference that we ought to bear in mind. <coughs> The OTs in Wandsworth very, work very closely with housing and in the provision of specialist equipment for people living with uh, disabilities and they provide a fantastic service. And the fact that the waiting list which in 2011 was uh, 311 with an waiting, average wait of five months which is now down to 28 with an average wait of three weeks is a testament to the hard work that's carried out within the department. Um, and it's an essential part of the reablement services. And the reablement in Wandsworth is of the highest uh, quality, which allows, uh, and it's a pity we didn't get to the question to the leader, question number nine, where uh, the answer on the page behind it shows that uh, we are uh, number one um, in uh, for delayed discharges from care, which is part of the way that the reablement is carried out. Um, and in conjunction with the health service, we're ranked number two. And there seems to be a, a desire to get into bed with Lambeth at every opportunity to, this, this evening. Uh, but I would say that in Lambeth, they um, 21st and 24th respectively. So I don't consider that as an option. But this is a good news, Nori, and I'd like to thank the Council for his question. Thank you. First call, Supplementary, Supplementary Madam Mayor. Uh, well, uh, I'd like to thank the Cabinet Member for his answer. Um, I uh, don't wish to be too much of an eeyore to his uh, figure, so let me uh, w welcome the improvements that have obviously been made. Clearly, the direction of travel here is right. Uh, but would he uh, recognise that an average of uh, three weeks means that there is still further to go, uh, that uh, within that average there are some cases where people are still uh, working, uh, waiting for significantly longer, and uh, would he agree with me that we need to uh, bring uh, those uh, levels of weight down still further? Councillor. I thank uh, Councillor Thomas for his supplement. I, I think Eeyore is the wrong in person in this particular case. I think uh, Councillor Thomas is behaving more like poo. Um, <laughs> because I, I believe uh, the, the hard work that is done by the OTs, uh, there are inevitably going to be some delays, uh, but I am, have been reassured by the Assistant Director this afternoon that, uh, or perhaps even Piglet. Um, uh, um, but uh, that they are constantly working to bring down the waiting time and they are doing some very good work within the department. Second supplementary. Um, item 13, Councillor Dunn. Question, oh, are you going to question still? Oh, question to the Cabinet Member for Environment, Culture and Community Safety. I, uh, I thank the councillor for the, uh, the question. As the answer uh, says here, we've issued uh, 104 uh, fixed penalty notices uh, in the month of June, which is a very significant increase on the equivalent period um, last year. We've had some high-profile uh, operations around uh, Clapham Junction, uh, Tooting Broadway, and that will be ongoing along with other uh, new measures we'll be bringing in. Uh, I do believe that even in this short period of time that we've been doing this, there's been a very appreciable impact. Uh, and one of the very interesting things has been that this has been warmly welcomed by the vast majority of residents. I think they expect us to take a fairly firm and assertive line uh, toward people who are littering our sort of public spaces. Um, 
and uh, I found that enormously encouraging. So uh, we, will, uh, we will continue, and we will continue with the education and trying to uh, shift the culture. I've said before in, uh, in this chamber, I find it faintly absurd that we spend almost four million pounds a year uh, picking things up uh, that people have dropped, and so therefore, in theory, uh, that is a very largely avoidable cost. Thank you, Councillor Dan. Um, thank you. I'd like to thank the Cabinet Member for his answer. Um, it wasn't actually quite the, the answer I thought I was going to get. So um, <laughs> I, I thought that there would be more um, littering outside the stations. But in fact, if you look at the figures, 80% um, of the littering is actually um, people putting their rubbish, bin, their rubbish bags or bins out on the wrong day or people putting bins out. They may not be living there. They may be around the corner or fly tipping. So one of my questions is, is this a problem um, in the rental sector? We have quite a fast churn, quite a high churn in parts of the borough. And is it because we have renters who aren't educated about this, who don't know about the rubbish days? And therefore, is there something that we could perhaps be doing with landlords and estate agents to remind them to remind tenants about being a good neighbour, putting your bins out on the right day? Councillor Cook. I thank the councillor for the uh, supplementary question, uh, and it's a very good one. Um, we have already written to, uh, to all of the letting agencies in the borough and asked them to communicate to tenants um, that it's very important that people understand uh, when their rubbish day is. And, and we do take a very sort of understanding line to, uh, towards honest mistakes, but people who flout the rules and fly tip uh, and dump their rubbish on pavements and expect somebody else to deal with it, um, uh, we, we will come down pretty hard. Uh, the other element of uh, FPNs, which is really what I was talking about earlier, is, is littering. Uh, it's littering and black bag fly tipping are really the two, the two areas. But we have written to all of the agencies and they've been very, uh, very cooperative because, of course, uh, just like all of us, just like all of our residents, they have an interest in the borough looking as good as it possibly can. Uh, so they're on site. They're very helpful. Second supplementary. Councillor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I thank the uh, councillor for his answer. Uh, a considerable number of us over the last couple of days have been out doing litter pickups in the borough. Um, councillor Osborne and I in, in Tooting, and I think the Northcote councillors were out outside Clapham Junction today, uh, organised by McDonald's, I have to say. And um, so I picked up probably about 500 faggins yesterday. So fixed penalty notices are too good for them as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, and I wonder if you, um, you would give consideration to, I don't see anything conservative or labor about this. I mean, it was just disgusting. Um, and uh, so I wonder if you would give consideration, is there any scope to enlarge the enforcement team to um, make this more um, effective the, the amount of enforcement we do and could you also pass on our kind regards to the enforcement officers because they were out with us yesterday and they do a sterling job thank you uh, I thank the councillor for the uh, second supplementary. I, I have seen pictures this evening of, uh, of you wearing McDonald's bibs at uh, Toot, Tooting Broadway. In fact, you're quite, you're quite right. Every, everybody else was very wise, very wise. <laughs> they, they, didn't, they didn't look particularly flattering to the wearers. But I, I, do, uh, I do very much applaud McDonald's initiative, and I hope that we'll be able to persuade other, boroughs, uh, other, other businesses uh, whose uh, the nature of their business is that it leads to a lot of packaging which gets spread around the place, uh, coffee, uh, coffee business would be an obvious one that we might be able to persuade to uh, come on board with that sort of activity. We very much welcome it. Um, as regards our uh, enforcement team, they are superb, I agree. I'll spend a lot of time with them. Um, I think the issue is actually uh, how they work, not making the team bigger. Uh, I think there is a little bit of a political dimension there that the, uh, the labor uh, instinct is to spend more money, make the team bigger. My instinct is to look at exactly what they're doing and to give you a comparison of uh, uh, the quarterly period, April to June of last year, uh, they issued 39 FPMs. That's in a three-month period. We have already issued 230 uh, this year, uh, and that still strikes me as quite a low figure. I very much welcome the support for coming down hard on people who drop fag ends or whatever else on the pavement. Uh, so I think that's the issue, uh, what the team are actually focusing on rather than making the team bigger. <laughs> Sorry, Councillor Usher. I have to be strong here. Um, item 14, uh, Councillor Boswell. Uh, yes, item 14 to the Cabinet Member, please. Uh, I thank the Councillor for the question. I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be able to confirm that Battersea Adventure Playground 
um, has reopened and uh, with phase one completed. It's very, very busy and is proven to be very, very popular. And phase two, which has started, will be completed within the next three weeks. Supplementary, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Um, I thank the Cabinet Member um, for her answer. Um, obviously, the Adventure Playground um, has reopened, but I'm hearing reports of it actually being quite unsafe because it is very busy. Children are reporting that the slides, are, they're all squashed on. The older children are climbing on the structures, um, and there's been lots of cuts and uh, scrapes. Um, and it really draws to attention what we said originally about the loss of the play workers. They are much missed, and I'm extremely concerned that there may be uh, serious accidents there. Um, what steps will the Cabinet member take to make sure that children are actually safe on that site? Um, uh, <laughs> I thank the Councillor for the supplementary. Um, I think she's actually just read the Friends of Battersea Park's <laughs> newsletter. I'd be very interested if she has actually spoken to anybody and if she, has, if she could pass them on to me, I'd very happily um, speak to them. We have absolutely no um, cases of um, injury or harm or danger. The park, uh, the playground is being patrolled uh, regularly to um, check. It is, however, I am delighted to say, very, very busy. And um, when phase two, which will enlarge the actual play area, is open, of course, the, the amount of youngsters using it will be a bit more dissipated. But it is proving to be immensely popular. Second supplementary, please. Uh, Councillor Cousins. Oh. Do you see Councillor Cousins? Cousins? Second supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, uh, the, the Cabinet Member did, uh, didn't answer some of the data questions on there, so I, I'd like, perhaps like to add some data of my own, uh, because I know for answer to A that two children have used it with an average age of three, although occasionally I uh, raise that average age to about 15. Um, <laughs> But one of the things about the park, um, and, and I'd, I'd hope the Cabinet Member will agree with me on this, but it's important about uh, the park and adventure uh, and play for children, is that there is that sense of adventure. There is also that sense of um, tolerable risk, and that children are exposed to opportunities where they may fall and harm themselves. And, and, and that's in, in place there. Uh, what it does also need, though, is, is an exercise of parental responsibility. And I'd ask the Cabinet Member, does she agree uh, that it's important children do have uh, the... Uh, access to adventure play which isn't always perfectly safe uh, and that the parents uh, it is always incumbent upon the parents to take responsibility to ensure their children using any facilities whether operated by the council or anyone else uh, are always safe um, the member makes a very good point uh, in his supplementary um, about the need for children to be allowed to play in an adventurous way um, and I perhaps would also add that um, uh, we've had some very good uh, uh, tenders come back for the um, Battersea Park um, Cafe, which will be in the former one o'clock centre, um, which will, I hope, make it more comfortable for parents to accompany their children. Um, uh, because of the numbers that are using it, we are expecting an awful lot of parents to be there. Um, and, of course, it has to be fun for them as well. But, of course, they have to take some responsibility but actually children should be allowed to play in the playground on their own and uh, one of the reasons for us um, changing to the equipment that we have is that it is um, perfectly safe for youngsters to be able to access this equipment um, on their own. Thank you Councillor Tracy. Um, item 15, Councillor Torrington. Question number 15 to the Cabinet Member. Madam. Uh, question number 15 to the Cabinet. My apologies. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Councillor Torrington, question. 16. No, we're on 15. <laughs> Down, boy. Uh, question number 15 to the Cabinet member. I thank Councillor Torrington for the question. Um, I'm very pleased to have this question because I think this is a, we have a fantastic story to tell on, on this one, one that even Christopher Robin would be proud to tell. <laughs> the, um, because of the council's sound financial management, um, we have been able to find extra money to put into potholes and pavements this year um, to significantly improve these er in, in these areas. And that's what's now happening across um, large swathes of the borough. We've already started repairing potholes and pavements and have been doing so for several months. And we're continuing to do that um, with nine crews across the borough. 
uh, supplementary. Uh, obviously, it takes time to get round all the wards, but do you have any feedback, complaints, or um, uh, contented clients in wards which have been repaired? Oh, an excellent supplementary, councillor. Um, yes, I have had huge amounts of uh, feedback um, on, on this situation. Overwhelmingly positive, I have to say. Um, I recently, uh, the department recently received um, um, a letter from uh, a, res a long-term resident in Inglow Road in Queenstown Ward, um, who, where they have, we have recently um, repaved uh, the street. Um, absolutely glowing praise for the department in the terms of not only uh, the relaying of the pavement, but in terms of the professionalism of the people that were doing it and how it was carried out. Second supplementary. Oops, Second supplementary. <laughs> and I apologise, I can't tell the difference between potholes one and potholes two. <laughs> Unfortunately, there seem to be a lot more potholes than one or two. <laughs> um, I welcome the uh, positive progress that uh, has uh, and is being made. Uh, but unfortunately, the last time I raised this, uh, some people might uh, be forgiven for having uh, got the impression that actually there was a bit of a dismissive attitude towards uh, this issue and uh, the fact that it's a very uh, legitimate thing for residents to be uh, raising. Can the cabinet member uh, clarify whether that was a misunderstanding or uh, does this signal a new determination on uh, his, uh, uh, his account to actually make sure that we have some real action? Um, and thank you, thank the councillor for the question. I was dismissive of you, councillor, rather than actually the residents of the borough, um, because as well. As we, all, as we all know, um, anybody who uh, understands these issues, and I was, as councillors, where this is an important resident issue, I'd expect everyone to understand, that when there is a cold spell, um, a frozen spell, um, the uh, water goes into the, uh, into the roads, it then freezes and cracks, um, and results in cracks and breakages into the road surface, which then results in potholes. When this happens, and this has happened for the last uh, three years, it inevitably results in potholes, and it's been not one that's um, unique to Wandsworth by any stretch of the imagination. There are the same concerns um, across the borough. Every time this happens, this council responds to the, that, the need. Because of our sound financial policies, um, we are able to respond and make sure that our roads are repaired appropriately and that by normally, um, within a couple of months, we have uh, the roads in a very fit state. I, I have to say, it's one of those things I was dismissive of your, you because you know the way the situation works. And if anybody comes up in terms of there'll be snow one day and then we know a month later there'll be potholes. That's the way it was, unfortunately. Thank you. Um, item 16, uh, question, Councillor Bilton. Question 16 of the Cabinet Member for Housing. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Belton for his question. Um, last year we estimate we spent just under uh, a quarter of a million pounds on uh, putting uh, people in uh, bed, accommodating people in bed and breakfast. Uh, I have to say to the Council, it is of course a, very much a last resort because not only is it one of the uh, most expensive uh, forms of temporary accommodation, it's also of course uh, the least satisfactory. Uh, we're not alone in this unfortunately, uh, and indeed uh, Councillor Belton may have read this morning uh, in the Guardian reports of London boroughs, uh, and they mentioned Newham in particular, I don't think they mentioned any others, uh, accommodating people as far away as Birmingham uh, in bed and breakfast. Uh, I'm very pleased to tell the councillor and indeed everyone else uh, that Wandsworth is not one of those councils. Second, Prime Minister. Um, Madam Mayor, um, I think the cabinet member is being a little bit defensive, saying that I know it's not poor performance and all kind of other boroughs. Yes, I am very well aware of that. Would he accept that I'm just trying to raise an issue which uh, perhaps he can give me a parallel? Any other form of illegal, illegal, that is, is against the wishes of Parliament, activity by any council, not just Wandsworth, um, that would get so little public uh, controversy. I mean, you couldn't imagine getting away with it in almost any other field, could you? But this politically unbelievably vulnerable and weak group, uh, all councils have been responsible. Uh, I can remember in the 1990s, he may not, we had a budget of about four million for bed and breakfast at one time. It's just about time we did something collectively about it. Not an accusation against this borough, but just... Um, 
Um, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Bolton for his supplementary. I mean, I mean, all I can say is, is that our officers are uh, doing the best they can. We are very limited in, in uh, Wandsworth in terms of temporary accommodation because we actually only have one bed and breakfast uh, that, uh, that will accept uh, homeless families. Uh, we do try to accommodate people as close as possible to the borough and, and the majority are, are accommodated in, uh, in Lambeth and, and Croydon. Councillor Tom. Uh, would the cabinet member not agree with me that actually we're doing comparatively well in very difficult circumstances and in actual fact we in Wandsworth have the lowest uh, temporary accommodation in the inner London borough. I'd like to thank Councillor Tom for his uh, supplementary. He's, he's exactly correct and of course the reason for that is uh, that we use uh, some of our own stock and also we have our own uh, hostel and temporary accommodation uh, and as the Councillor will know we've uh, just recently extended that by converting uh, Doors House uh, from uh, uh, NHS uh, accommodation into, uh, into temporary accommodation for homeless families. Thank you Councillor. Um, item 17, Councillor Ryder. Uh, question 17 to the Cabinet Member for Economic Development. Uh, thank you for the, the question, um, particularly because it gives me the opportunity to encourage all members uh, to bring to their, their residents' attention the, the uh, exercise, uh, although if they do use this answer to it, I should point out the typo that uh, the website, the ones of tow centres may be very good for vehicle recoveries, but should of course be ones of towncentres.co.uk. Um, more generally though, um, it's, it's one of those things that perhaps seems a little bit um, uh, abstract or esoteric, but the town centres have taken this up with gusto. Um, and I think one of the problems, um, or one of the issues I've always, always had in dealing with businesses in the town centres is that very often they're so concerned with the day-to-day, -day, uh, with the uh, the nitty-gritty of running a business and of the issues that they face, they, they never take the opportunity to just lift their head up and look to the horizon uh, and think about what sort of town centre they want to be creating uh, and be part of in, in coming years. Uh, so it's been really exciting to see how well this exercise has been taken up by the businesses and I think it will be even more exciting to see the visions uh, and the plans that develop as a result of it. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Ryder, do you want a prime supplementary? Would anybody... <laughs> Question 18 to the Cabinet Member. Ah, I thank uh, the councillor for a very similar question, I suspect, to the, the previous one. The only thing I'll, 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 I'll um, highlight in here is um, our excellent record at turning around uh, fixing our serious potholes. As soon as we are aware of a, a serious pothole, uh, the vast majority of them are, are, are correct within two to three days. There are exceptions, um, and these often are, for example, where there's complications. Um, so, for example, where there might be uh, leakages from Thames Water, where fixing the pothole will not solve the underlying problem, and we need to wait for the leakage to be fixed. Supplementary, Madam Mayor. I'm pleased to uh, oblige with another question on his uh, favourite topic here. Um, but I was somewhat intrigued because, in fact, uh, you don't give any figure whatsoever for the uh, number of unfilled potholes. Are you seriously telling me that we have no idea at all how many unfilled potholes there are uh, to tackle uh, in the borough? Uh, I could tell you how many urgent repair potholes there are to tackle in the borough. The answer would be none. <laughs> Any other supplementary? That is, uh, concludes the questions.